Good morning and welcome to St. James's Episcopal Church on this fifth Sunday after Pentecost as we celebrate the rite of holy baptism and our Lord's Supper. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. There is one body and one spirit. There is one Lord in God's calls to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O Lord, mercifully receive the prayers of your people who call upon you and grant that they may know and understand what things they ought to do and also may have grace and power faithfully to accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the lesson. A reading from the prophet Amos. This is what the Lord God showed me. The Lord was standing beside a wall built with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said to me, see, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will never again pass them by. The high places of Isaac shall be made desolate and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste and I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. And then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to King Jeroboam of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you. And in the very center of the house of Israel, the land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile away from this land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go, flee away to the land of Judah, Earn your bread there, and prophesy there, but never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary, and it is a temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered Amaziah, I am no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I am a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore trees. The Lord took me from following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. Now therefore, hear the word of the Lord. You say, do not prophesy against Israel, and do not preach against the house of Isaac. Therefore, thus says the Lord, your wife shall become a prostitute in the city, and your sons and your daughters shall fall by the sword, and your land shall be parceled out by line. You yourself shall die in an unclean land, and Israel shall surely go into exile away from its land. The word of the Lord. We will read Psalm 82 responsibly, responsibly by half verse on page 705 of the Book of Common Prayer. God takes his stand in the council of heaven. How long will you judge unjustly? Save the weak and the orphan. Rescue the weak and the poor. They do not know, neither do they understand. They go about in darkness. All the of the earth are shaken. Now I say to you, you are gods. And all of you children of the most high. Nevertheless, you shall fall like most. You fall like any prince. Arise, O God, and rule the earth. For you shall take all nations. A reading from the letter to the Colossians. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brothers and sisters in Christ in Colossae, grace to you and peace from God our Father. In our prayers for you, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints 
because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. You have heard of this hope before in the word of the truth, the gospel that has come to you. Just as it is bearing fruit and growing in the whole world, so it has been bearing fruit among yourselves from the day you heard it and truly comprehended the grace of God. This you heard from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf, and he has made known to us your love in the Spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard it, we have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, as you bear fruit in every good work and as you grow in the knowledge of God. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power, and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. A lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. 
he went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. The Gospel of our Lord. In the name of our loving and liberating and life-giving God, amen. By all accounts, I was a very inquisitive child. I would always ask questions, not just about the world at large, but about people, about how they were doing or what was going on with them. And at some point, maybe I had asked enough of those questions that some of the adults in my life, I think very well intentioned, started to say things to me like, mind your own business, or don't be too snoopy. Certainly, they never called me a gossip or anything like that, but I feel like I was on the receiving end of statements like that more than a few times in my life. I was always wanting to dive in and find out all of the details about the people I knew, whether I knew them really well or whether it was someone I had just met. I was just always curious about what was going on, not so much in a need to know just for the sake of knowing, but I think as I've grown up and sort of processed that part of myself, it was an expression of my care for those people. I'd often say, Mom, what's going on with that person? Dad, why does the person on the side of the road need money? What's going on with Mrs. So-and-so down the street? She wears a headscarf all the time. Whether or not we are born with a high degree of curiosity, I think that it is a part of human nature to wonder about other people to be interested in the lives and the stories of those around us, whether they are people we know well or sometimes whether they are our new neighbors. Our curiosity and our care for those around us is what helps us to be truly connected to the communities that we are a part of, whether that's our schools or where we work or our neighborhoods or our churches. That call to care, to ask the question, to be connected, is a call not to mind our own business. It's in fact actually the opposite. Because when we know one another, when we know the stories of those around us, when we know the ups and downs of the lives of the people whose lives intersect with ours, that is when we can live out that call that we hear so beautifully illustrated in this morning's gospel to show up in love for the one who is in need, to show up in mercy and in care. The gospel this morning tells us that it is indeed our business and indeed our call to involve ourselves in other people's lives. Being a doer of the word, as we talk about so much at St. James's, necessarily involves that kind of involvement. To commit to widening the circle for those for whom we care and those we, who, with whom we spend our time, caring and helping when we can, I think is a chief goal of what it means to grow in our Christian life. In the story of the Good Samaritan this morning, Jesus illustrates this point rather obviously. 
that there are those who choose to keep walking to not help to turn away, and then there is one who chooses to stop, to ask the question, to see what help is needed, and then indeed to help as he can. And now the story of the Good Samaritan challenges our assumptions about who it is that can do the helping. There's lots of pieces of this narrative that involve race and class and neighbors and foreigners. But this gospel story in its entirety challenges us to recognize that help can show up in unexpected ways that sometimes we are called to be those unexpected helpers. It illustrates for us the reality that many good people might choose to keep walking, but it asks us to remember that we are called to do something different. At each point in our lives, we are probably one of the characters in this story. We are both the Good Samaritan and the person in need. We are all of the people who pass by and choose not to be helpers. We have the opportunity over and over again throughout our lives to choose which of those ways in which we might show up and to choose how we might respond if we choose to be helpers. This gospel story reminds us that 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 call that we've been talking about, that that call is is really to risk-taking. And that call to risk-taking is extended to us over and over and over again throughout our lives. If we thought about this story in today's world, we might reframe it, but I think we've all probably lived a story like this at some point in our lives where we've seen someone in need and we've watched some people respond, we've watched some people help, and we've had to choose where we show up in that process. In today's, it might look like people on their phones passing by at a glance, children pointing out the needs of the man on the side of the road as the adults shuffle them along, honey, we can't be late. We don't have time for that. He isn't our business. And then in today's world, it might look like someone who doesn't necessarily seem like they have the means to help being the one that actually stops. But I think the point of this story, the point of hearing this gospel, is not to condemn us or make us feel guilty or bad about those times in which we can't or don't choose to be helpers for we all have our own stories. But I think it's a call to remember, to take that moment to kind of do that gut check in ourselves. It's a reminder to be opening, to listening to those times where our bodies and our souls call us to do what we can when we encounter someone in need to ask the question and to stop and tend what needs healing when we can. I would think that all of us know what that feeling is, right? That tug on your heart where you know that you're encountering someone in need and you might have the ability to do something to make the situation better. You know that feeling, right? Yeah, right? And so in today's world, rather than a man lying on the side of the road, it might be that lonely elderly neighbor. It might be that teenager who used to smile. It it might be that parent who is doing it all or that friend who you haven't talked to in a long time. It might be that person that you've just met on the street. We are all called to take that risk of being connected and to care to take the risk of spending our time and our energy for someone that maybe the rest of the world has chosen to ignore or pass by, for someone who sits in need while most people do, in fact, stare silently at their phones or look the other way. To be involved with God in the world, we must be willing to be involved in the lives of one another. 
One of my favorite theologians, Ellen Davis, wrote a book called Getting Involved with God. And in her book, she talks about how to be involved with God, we have to know the whole story of who God is, that we have to dig through the soil of scripture, turning it over and over, time and time again, knowing about the good and the hard and the ugly and the hopeful places and ways in which God shows up in the story of God's people. And I think that the story of the Good Samaritan is indeed a call to that sort of digging and involvement in the lives of those around us. It's what we are called to be with one another and to do with one another, because that, I think, is also how we get to know God. And getting involved can be messy. It can take time and energy, and it can also stretch us beyond the places where we might be comfortable. It means making ourselves vulnerable as we care for those in need, risking that we might be shut down or not received well. It takes bravery and the willingness to take a risk, to stop and ask the question, and then to get involved. And while we can't spend all of our time helping or being involved in each and every person's lives in that way, again, we are called to be intentional about responding when we encounter someone whose needs we might be equipped to help meet. It might not be just as obvious as the man lying on the side of the road, but the needs are there in this world just the same. It's how we live into those promises that we are going to make in a few minutes as we renew our baptismal covenant. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? Caring for one another, loving one's neighbor as oneself, showing up in mercy, striving for justice and peace, and respecting the dignity of every human being is really what these questions in this story today are about and Jesus' answer. Because we, like the Good Samaritan, are called to take that brave risk of reaching out of asking how we can show up and help care for those in need, how we can get involved even when it's messy, because that is indeed what it means to be a follower of Jesus. So may we who witness the brokenness of this world and the needs of our neighbors near and far have the courage like the Good Samaritan to take the risk of getting involved and digging in, of being brave, and stretching ourselves when we can to care for and love our neighbors. For that is what we are called to do, and that is how the world is mended, and that is how the kingdom is brought near in our midst. Amen.
The candidate for holy baptism will now be presented. So all together you can say. To receive the sacrament. All right, we can do it again. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> all right, the candidate for holy baptism will now be presented. Perfect. Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? Will you, by your prayers and witness, help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? I renounce. Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? I renounce. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your savior? I do. Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? I do. Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? And this is for all of us. Will you who witness those vows do all in your power to support Charles in his life in Christ? We will. Let us join Charles who is committing himself to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will in God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people, and respect the dignity of every human being. I will in God's help. As we pray for this candidate who is to receive the sacrament of baptism, I'd like to invite any other children in the congregation who would want to come up and be closer to watch the baptism to go ahead and do that. So y'all are all welcome to come up here if you want a little closer look. You want to come up? Come on. Yeah. Great. It's nice to have a really close-up view, you know? All right. Let us now pray for Charles, who is to receive the sacrament of new birth. After each petition, you will respond with, Lord, hear our prayer. Deliver him, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open his heart to your grace and truth. Fill him with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep him in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach him to love others in the power of the spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send him into the world and witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. 
bring him to the fullness of your peace and glory. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. The congregation may be seated. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give you thanks and praise. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we now bring into his fellowship those to come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. All right, you ready? Do you think, do you think he'll let me hold him? Hello. Hi. Ready? Charles, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son. I know, one more. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Whoop. <laughs> I know he doesn't like it, does he? Charles, <laughs> you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. That wasn't too bad, right? All right, there you go. <laughs> you feel different? Thank you. Receive this light as a sign of the new life which has been enkindled in you. Want to hold? Yeah, that got a smile. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit, you have bestowed upon your servant Charles the forgiveness of sin and have raised him to the new life of grace. Sustain him, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give him an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Please stand as you are able and let us welcome the newly baptized. We receive you into the household of God. Confess the faith of Christ crucified. Proclaim his resurrection and share with us in his eternal priesthood. Congratulations. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Congratulations again. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. Congratulations again, Charles and family. And good morning. good morning. Welcome again to St. James's. 
kids in this, on this uh, muggy summer morning, but we are glad you're here. I'm the Reverend Amelia Arthur, your Associate Rector, and it's great to be with all of you. If you are visiting this morning, welcome. We would love to see you and get to know you and um, try to connect with you if you so, uh, so choose. We have a wonderful member of our congregation, Becky, who is our greeter this morning. So if you are new, she is wearing the Ask Me name tag. So please do find her. Also, I'd like to thank um, Casey Dunaway for stepping in today as our guest organist. Thank you very much. And right after today's service, Casey is going to be giving a tour of our organ. So if you are interested, please just meet him up in the balcony. Um, also, right after church in Valentine Hall, there will be fellowship with some cookies and um, coffee. So we hope to see you there just for a time of fellowship and time together. Next Sunday, July 17th, right after the 10 o'clock service in Valentine Hall, we are having a special summer rector's forum. Um, John and I and the other church leaders will be available to answer your questions about St. James's as we look ahead to the new program year. So lots of us will be sort of sharing about the plans to come as we come back for the fall. Uh, we expect this uh, to be a really meaningful event, so please mark your calendars. Um, there's lots to know always, uh, things going on over the summer. John and Katie and a few members of our youth are well on the way to their creation pilgrimage in Florida, so you can follow all of their travels and the what St. Jamesers are up to um, around the city and country and world on our Facebook and Instagram pages. Just two reminders as well that after communion, those of you who are celebrating birthdays or anniversaries are welcome uh, to come to the rail, as well as anyone who might just want prayers or a blessing. So come on up. And so finally, I see a lot of you wearing your name tags, so thank you for doing that. So we, all, we always have uh, the individual sticky name tags out in the um, narthex, so please do wear your name tag. Uh, help us all to get to remember each other's names as we come back together after potentially a time away. We're in the process of creating permanent name tags, so we are going to have some ways for you to order those coming up. But in the meantime, we'd love to ask you to just use those single-use name tags. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
If any of the children would like to come forward at the celebration of the Eucharist, come forward at the altar rail at this time. For the Eucharist, we pray for our prayers of the parish. We pray for all in our congregation who are grieving and in need of care, as well as those who provide care for the grieving and those in need, especially our Stephen ministers. We lift up in our prayer the sick and those who have asked for our prayers, especially for Mary Lee, Bry, Steve, Hyla, Stacy, Virginia, Cindy, John, Tommy, Tom, Nadine, Jennifer, Jamie, Ernest, Anne, Barbara, Matt, Ray, Bunky, Sally, Scott, Carol, Danny, Bradford, Emma, Ann, Bobby, Betsy, Aaron, Ben and Eloise, Ace, David and Georgia. We ask for your care and protection of all healthcare workers, first responders and frontline workers. We ask for your sure defense of all those serving in armed forces, especially David, Robbie, Sam, Wilson, William, and Mitchell. We give thanks for the lives and ministers of all who celebrate birthdays this week, especially those who celebrate their birthdays today. The Kitty Bryan, Donna Ellis, Amanda Morton, Brian Norfleet, Jacob O'Brien, and Bob Siegfried II. We give thanks to the life and ministry of the Right Reverend Bishop Peter James Lee, 12th Bishop of the Diocese of Virginia, who passed away in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, on July the 2nd. And we pray for the repose of the soul of David Theo, who passed away recently. Bishop William Cabell Brown, Mrs. William Cabell Brown, Mary Meek Brown, John Dorsey Brown, Virginia Brown Trice, Dr. E. Randolph Trice, and Virginia Bell Trice, in whose memory the flowers were given. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in Jesus Christ our Lord you have received us as your sons and daughters, made us citizens of your kingdom, and given us the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken to the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days <clears throat> you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he gave him thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine, and when he gave him thanks, he gave to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. When you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ 
and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection unto your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where the Blessed Virgin Mary and James, our patron, and all your saints, we enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as the Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, the sacrifice for us. The gifts of God for the people of God, take the remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. <clears throat>
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us down to the world in peace. And grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.